some idea about factor analysis? All of you have some idea about this? Please, anyone? Uh, yes, sir. Little bit. Yes, fine. So, uh, can you can anyone of you uh, please say when we, we apply factor analysis, in which situation we do this, or what are the conditions for uh, performing a factor analysis? Any one of you, please. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Participants, please respond. So, all so are triad after two sessions. Actually, uh, Livermore is the first session. This is the second session. <laughs> oh. So, anyone, or please. You know or yes or no? Just uh, answer yes or no. If you know when when to apply factor analysis and why we apply factor analysis. Any one of you, please. When we want to reduce uh, the information and see if there's a relationship between the variables that we are using, uh, uh, you would use factor analysis. Anything else? Anything else? <laughs> Any other? When we use factor analysis? If you don't know, please say no, or if you know something, please tell me. It is used when we, uh, we are dealing with the latent variables, which we are using when you have unobserved variables. You use factor analysis. Yeah, fine. I, I, uh, my, my question is, any other uh, participant can say anything out of the box or what she said? Anything else? Or all of you agree with R? If you don't respond, so then it is not possible to take the class properly. Hello? Participants, are you there? Firstly, I have to check it. Yeah. Are you there or just uh, log in and uh, away from Doing your something? System? Yeah. That, that's my question also. Uh, if you, you are not the... there, then please log out. If you are uh, those who are generally here in, before the system, they should be there in the class. Otherwise, uh, you can uh, leave it. We have no issue. So participants, are you there or not? Am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, please. So respond. The Chandan, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. So why are you not response? Sir, I am not able to answer your question. That's why I am not responding. Please say no. Otherwise, how can I know you are there or not? So nobody, are you there? Am I audible to you, Nabonita? Shubo, are you there? Obijit? Will be responded in the chat box. 
please up when i share my screen it is not possible for me to see the chat box yeah, and i don't know i don't know so you just unmute yourself and say something borun momit ji apni egi jan tara respond koruk na koruk chhere din egi jan So, Momita, have you any op opinion regarding this? Are you yes, there? Sir. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, this is actually the dimension reduction method, and we can observe the um, uh, variability among the variables. Observe, unobserved, and correlated variables. Fine, correlated. Very good. Is my screen is audible, visible to you? Yes, sir. Yeah. So very good evening. And please, response whatever you know. Otherwise, it is in online mode. It is very tough to take class. Suppose <clears throat> I will try to give you the some uh, concepts regarding factor analysis, and then I will show you the R codes and how you perform this R with a real life example. Already, you receive a mail with three data sets. That I given you for your practice purpose. One is for today's class, and another two for the practice purpose. So suppose in a school, in class two level, is in ten level is the uh, board level examination. The students have different subjects like physics, chemistry, mathematics, geography, history, Bengali, and English. These are the main subjects for uh, board examinations, and. Uh, this basically physics chemistry mathematics these three are um, science subjects which call this science subject and geography history belongs to the humanities groups and bengali english is belongs to the literature category and the conventional belief we can, or you can say uh, some concepts was that like this those are the students who are Good in mathematics or chemistry or physics, they are not so good in Bengali or English. It may not be true, but some type of conjecture is there. The students who are good in mathematics clearly he is good in he or she is good in physics or chemistry, but the students who is good in literature may not be good in mathematics. This type of convention is there in our culture in Indian culture basically. So, when we uh, dealing with this type of problem, what happened? There is an underlying assumption. What are the assumptions? This is the assumption that the students who were good in mathematics may they also good in physics and chemistry, and they is capable to science in the next in their next examination of the next part of the life. Similarly, those who are good in geography and history, they are basically belonging to the humanities group, and they are not so much good in mathematics or physics. Similarly, for literature group, but how we statistically prove this that the underlying assumption is actually true? How we prove this? So here, basically, when we consider this type of problem, we are facing some. Problems some and this type of particular scenario actually creates some questions. <clears throat> what are the questions? The first one is if we collect the numbers of the students of a particular school of a board examination, so you can get the numbers of different subjects. So from the subject, if we try to establish that the or from the this seven, if we consider these seven variables. And from these seven variables, we try to construct some factor with the help of our domain knowledge. What is the domain knowledge? The story I already told you. So we already know this, or the conjecture is this, or the conventional 
thinking is this so on the basis of this what is our underlying assumption that on the basis the number that we collect from a board examination that gives us this type of result that is one homogeneous groups for the science another group for humanities another group for literature so what is our objective our objective is to construct some factors from these seven variables here we consider the seven variables as one of your one of the participant told that hundred of the variables are there we try to reduce that the philosophy is same and the next question is who are the members in that particular factor suppose what is our objective we try to reduce or the seven variable which i to create three factors and this is the first question first objective what is the second objective once we able to make three factors who are the members in this factor <coughs> who are the member in this factor and regarding the membership who are the members in this factor we basically follow two methods one is orthogonal and another is oblique view. so what when we use orthogonal transformation so what after finding out the number of factors so initially we started with seven variables and now we able to make it in a three factors so this is actually the method which is known as principal component analysis so what is pca when we when when our objective is our target is from seven or 70 variables create some factors based on our domain knowledge that is there is underlying assumption there is a certain assumption when why we use why we try to make is a factor because the literature or the available literature support that from these variables these variables is a is one some homogeneous nature is there so it makes one factor so first we make this from seven variable to three factor that is the principal component analysis for second that is who are the members so suppose we create three factors suppose we create three factors suppose f1 is the factor f2 is another factor f3 is another factors so who are the members if we prove that our conjecture or assumption is true so the members should be pcm in one factor geography and history in another factor and bengali and english in another factor and for this we use basically two methods one is orthogonal transformation and another is oblique transformation so what is the meaning of orthogonal transformation when we assume that these factors are independent these factors are independent <clears throat> that means this within this factor there is no correlation or the correlation is very low then we use orthogonal transformation that is as per the conventional concept the students who belongs in science stream is weak in math is in literature or humanities similarly the students from literature are weak in mathematics or science group so that means there is no correlation between the factors but and this basically exploratory factor analysis efa and when we use the oblique rotation that means this factor have some relation this factor have some interaction and that actually the concept of cfa but in this class, we basically deal with one and two, not on CFA. And you remember one thing, the inter-principal component analysis or factor analysis is depends on correlation matrix or covariance matrix. So the common mistake in literature also there. So please remember this thing. When we deal with the correlation matrix or the covariance matrix, that means the data is basically following normality or the scale data. So when you collect data from primary survey in a five point scale, there is a debate still now for five point scale data. It is factor analysis or principal component analysis is actually applicable or not. 
why so explain these three uh, three categories again explain these three categories again that is in f1 f2 f3 I, what i have understood is that from a group of variables we are trying to reduce the number of variables and trying yeah. to find which are the factors are actually trying to explain the situation what, what, uh, actually trying which, to explain which the variable which of the variable belong are, to which factor uh, uh, which of the variables are mostly responsible for this not variable not responsible not responsible which of the variables are contribute are contributing that is the principal component analysis okay first one and this is the explanatory factor analysis when we try to find out the variable in a particular factor that is actually explanatory factor analysis in between these two how, the, how, the, how does these two are different uh, that i that i explain in when i show you the case study i try to give you the fundamental concept without mathematics i am not able to tell you that p belongs to f1 or c belongs to f2 that's why the mathematics is there clear any doubt yeah i have a doubt this is in my how how this thing when i am saying that you are reducing the factors yeah so that is the principal component analysis no 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 finding the factors is principal component analysis when you find num set the number of factors that is principal component so factors. after finding you find that three factors are there but how we set these three factors or four factors or two factors different rule is there that is another uh, other part once you find three factors is there who are the members of these factors that is explanatory factor analysis right and in that case we are basically using the orthogonal rotation why because we are assuming that the factors are independent now the question is pertinent question how we find that the, there are three factors why not two factors why not four factors and who are the members of the factors so to determination of the factors we basically use the method of eigen value and what is the rule not rule generally we used in literature if the eigen value is greater than 1 then we consider that in a factor this is the rule that we follow in literature so first what is the first step for factor analysis first is to find out the eigen value and on the basis of the eigen value the factors whose eigen value is more than 1 we consider this as a factor for our further analysis suppose for two factors the eigen value is greater than 1 so we consider the factor is 2 and then we find who are the members in the in these two factors since we are using the orthogonal rotation that means we assuming that these factors are independent no correlation is there among these factor there is no interaction is there so when we use the orthogonal rotation we start our analysis by calculating the correlation matrix or the covariance matrix so fundamentally the factor analysis when we start our factor analysis we start from correlation analysis or covariance that is from either we consider the correlation matrix or we consider the covariance matrix so you can calculate the pearson correlation coefficient when, when your data is actually following normal that is your data is measured in a scale i think all of you know about the scaling nominal scale ordinal scale scale is there so if your data you calculate if you collect your data in ordinal scale that is in 5 point likert scale your data is no longer a normal data this is basically a categorical data for categorical data you cannot use pca why because you cannot form a correlation matrix so for categorical data the thing you use for factor analysis that is commonly known as categorical factor analysis or cat factor but cat pca if you search in google <coughs> lots of literature are there on categorical pca and what is the difference between categorical pca and the pca that today we discussed <clears throat> so now directly i go to the case study so 
So I will give you this quote. Mm. Due to the time limitation, I will show you a brief step thoroughly. You just follow me. And if you have any question anywhere, please stop me. Don't hesitate. I will show you the case. Then you understand when you use the factor analysis and how we use the factor analysis. Suppose uh, first we import data. Already this data file mailed to you. The name of the data file is Sensex, BST Sensex data. You just see first the data. This is the data Sensex, Gold, FPI, CMR, CRR, Oil, Dollar, FDI, Foreign, and Forex. These are the variables we consider for this particular case. This is the data I am taken from a published paper. Right now, I am forgotten the name of the paper, but it was published in 2013. And one of the authors is uh, Gautam Bandhavadhyay of NIT Durgapur. But I current uh, current I am not currently I am not remembering the name of the paper. Yeah, if I am recall this, I will uh, definitely send you through mail. And I am not search I am searching in my system, but I am not finding it right now. So this data or basically I am taken from that paper. Uh, so this is the data. And what is the objective? <coughs> objective is to find out the determinants of the sensex. The objective is to find out the determinant of the sensex. First objective. So when the objective is which factors are actually determining the sensex, what do you use? Basically, we have to use the regression. So in the class of factor, why I am talking about the regression? You just for, listen to me, <coughs> then you understand <coughs> why there is a need for factor analysis. So <coughs> when we <clears throat> try to run a regression you already know how to run regression in your session was there you know this so since it is the dependent variable and these all factors are independent variable now what is our objective objective is to determine the effect of each independent variable on sensex so what i do here i slightly uh, Rearrange the data. The command you let uh, all, all the commands I mail you. I mail you the, all the comments. No, no. You let the chat box and then now that should be done. I will chat mail the entire box. script. I will mail you the entire script. We just first see. I will give this. <coughs> So first we run the regression model, we then check the summary. Time. You see the output. What is R square? 79 percent, 0.79. Fine. What is p-value? Another test. It is less than 0 0.05. Overall model is fixed. Fitted model. But what about the individual parameters? Only one factor is significant, x6. At five. And another is significant at one percent level. So model is overall fit. <coughs> Your R value is high. But what about the individual parameters? Individual effect? The result source? Only one variable is significant. So what to do with this result? And why this happen? Why this happen? Try to find why this happened, this type of result. We just check the VIF. You already know that the library card is used for that. And if we see the VIF, you see what is the value of the VIF? All the values are more than two. This is 14. This is 15. This is 11. So there is a huge multicollinearity. There is a huge multicollinearity among the variables. The problem arises when the data have multicollinearity. 
what to do with the data. Can we stop here? So the student are doing PhD research work and after performing regression analysis, multicollinearity is there, what to do? The next step is when there is a data have a multicollinearity, that is the data have a huge intercorrelation, then we try to use the factor analysis. Not only the dimension reduction, but when there is a high multicollinearity in our data, to remove this multicollinearity without dropping the variable, one of the method is factor analysis. If we <coughs> run the correlation, if we run the correlation, I am using here this package HMISC. You see, this is the correlation. This is the correlation value. And this is the p-value. And see, with respect to x1, 0 0.76, high correlation. 0 0.64, 0 0.71. So this variable, x1 with x2, x7, sorry, x8, x9, have high correlation. If the time limitation, I am not showing you the how to check high correlation, but if you go to the copy this and put, paste in Excel or write CSV command, if, if you use the right CSV command and go to the Excel, you can easily find out which variable have high correlation with the other variables. So variables are highly correlated to each other. Multicollinearity also suggests. So we now in a position to run the factor analysis. But if you consider X3, you see, this is the variable. All the coefficients are except these two maximum coefficients are low. And what about the significance level? You just see only this value is significant. All other values are insignificant in terms of p value. So only two value is significant, but none other than all values are insignificant. Similarly, if you consider x6, only the up leave y only two or three values are significant so if we see this <coughs> after visualization we can say these two variables are less correlated among the all other variables x3 and x6 but except x3 and x6 all other variables are highly correlated so what we do we create another data set just leaving x3 and x7, sorry, x7, this row. You see only this, all other are insignificant, only these two. So majority of these are insignificant. So we are dropping these two variables we create another data set. And one, as I told you, <coughs> sorry, as I told you, the factor analysis, basically, we start with the correlation matrix. The first step for factor analysis is find out the correlation matrix. So we, the command is core, line number 43. See, code W1. So we just run this. This is the correlation matrix. On the basis of this, with the help of this correlation matrix, we try to calculate the determinant value of this correlation. And it is positive. If it is zero, if the value of the determinant is zero, you cannot perform factor analysis. That is the problem of singularity. Next, so the first step is this. Second step, is to find out the KMO value. And R gives you the KMO, overall KMO, and the KMO of the individuals. And most of the KMOs are high KMO. So overall image is, is 0. 0.62. 0.62. Right? So this actually suggests that we can, in a position, to continue our factor analysis. 
if it is less than 4 then you cannot in a position to run the factor analysis next is sir sir, what is sir i have one question kaiser mayer o and what does it mean actually the time is very short i am not going to the details of the mathematics i am giving you the steps and the interpretation here so you told that uh, if the value's determinant is zero we cannot go for factor analysis right yeah uh, you cannot find so, the inverse so here the oh. value of determinant is Yes, if, you, if the determinant value is zero, zero cannot find index, the inverse. So. If if the value of determinant is zero, you cannot find the inverse. Right? So if you don't find the inverse, so ro any rotation is not possible. There is a matrix algebra is there. So orthogonal transformation, when you rotate the matrix, there is the in a inverse term is there in mathematical forms. So if determinant value is zero, you cannot find a inverse. So that's why this is a requirement. Next so in this case, can we go for here the this determinant case. value zero zero one two? So in this case, here the determinant value is zero point zero zero one two nine. So it's not equal to here, zero. Uh, can we go? Uh, yes, it's sir. Okay, okay. Not equal to zero. It so you can, we can go. You can proceed. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Right. So according to KMO, also suggests that sample adequacy is there you can in a position for further process of your data. Now we see the Bartlett test. What is the null hypothesis? Null is the matrix is a unit matrix. So if your matrix is a unit matrix, what it means? Unit matrix means this is the unit matrix. Diagonals are one, all others zero. So null is your matrix is actually a unit matrix. So if null hypothesis is accepted, you are not in a position to continue the factor analysis. Why? Because your matrix value always one. So what is our Bartlett value in this particular test? The comment is code test dot Bartlett. Code test line number 49, code test dot Bartlett. If we run this, so here p value is less than 0 0.05. So we are in a position to continue. Why? Because we are here rejecting the null hypothesis. That means our matrix is not a unit matrix. Clear up to this part? Yes, sir. Any doubt up to this? Up to this, it is clear. So the first part is done. That is, what are the conditions? You have to check KMO. You have to check determinant value. You have to check the Bartlett value. And all these values are depends on correlation. So we are defining G as correlation matrix. So we are, we are using the correlation matrix here to calculate the KMO, to calculate the Bartlett. Clear up to this. Now, the next part. How many number of factors are there? Out of these variables, how many variables you consider? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you are considering here 7 variables. So among these 7 variables, or with the help of these 7 variables, how many factors we can construct? Clear? That, for that purpose, the code is eigen. Yeah, this is the object name. The function is eigen. And on the basis of the correlation matrix, we run this. Eigen is eigen G. 
And what are the eigen values? These are the eigen values. You see? This is the eigen value. So you just see only two values is more than one. As I told you, what is the rule? Rule is if the eigen value is more than one, then we consider this as a factor. These two values are more than one. So these seven variables, from these seven variables, we are able to construct only two factors. We are able to construct only two factors. Right? Up to this, it is clear? Yes, is clear or not? So I have a question. Some uh, I have found, seen that they use the uh, various covariance metrics to calculate the eigenvalues, or is it the co correlation? Is, is there a difference in that? So if you consider this, this is actually the covariance matrix. This is the cob. Covariance matrix is this. And what is correlation matrix? If we divide this. So this is actually one. This is one. This is one. The self-correlation. And these all are the partial correlations. So the, the thing is same. From covariance matrix, we are deriving the correlation matrix. Clear? Yeah. You can use any one of these. Okay. Commonly, we use the correlation matrix. Clear? So, so we already determined that there are two factors for this particular case. Out of from seven, we can construct two factors. <clears throat> if we run this, the function is pins pins com. What are, what are, who are the components? The arguments are the data set, that is the W1, name of the data set. Score is true and correlation is true. So here, correlation automatically calculated in the system. So if you run this, what is the PCA? These are the components, standard deviation. I will show you the summary. It is more easy for you. Line number 52. Summary of PCA2, you just see. This is the cumulative percentage explained by the each component. The first component, component one, individually explained 55%. The second component, individually explained 25%. The third component, individually explained only 7%. Similarly, 4, 5, 6, 7. But as per the rule, we are considering two factors. Why? Because eigenvalue is more than one for the two factors. And for two factors, the cumulative proportion is 81%. 81%. That is, 81% is explained by these two factors. What is the unexplained part? That is 19%. 19% is the unexplained part. And 81% is explained by these two factors. Clear? How much explanation is there? 81% of the variation is explained by these two factors. So now, what is our first question? Determining the factors using principal component. So you already determined the factor. How many factors? Two factors. 
how we determine this we determine this on the basis of the eigen value these two factors how much explanation is there 81% of the total variation is explained by these two factors the next question who are the member in the factors we consider these variables x1 x2 x4 x5 x6 x8 x9 so two factors are there who are the members of each factors for this we run this code line number 54 the command is pca number of factor is 2 we already determined this we use the method very max very much method is basically a orthogonal rotation method score is true if we run this and then try to find out the loadings factor loadings you just see this is the factor loadings and how we find which variable to the which factor generally we consider the value more than 0.5 so if the value of factor loading is more than 0.5 then that particular variable belongs to that particular factor so if we consider this we just see You just see for x1 for factor 1 the value is 0.97 the factor is 0 0.110 so x1 definitely belongs to factor 1 regarding x2 1 is point x is 2 absolute sense it is 0 0.187 so x2 also belongs to factor 2 x4 sorry a factor 1 x4 what is the value 0 0.201 0 0.864 similarly for x5 it belongs to 946 in factor 2 so x4 x5 belongs to factor 2 x6 one value is 0 0.573 another value is 0 0.791 719 so in both the factor it is more than 0.5 so what about x6 the first question you just see x8 and x9 automatically belongs to factor 1 so under factor 1 what are the factors x1 x2 x8 and x9 and under factor 2 x4 and x5 but what about x6 Inter if we consider x6 the loading is higher in both factor 1 and factor 2 but since we consider in the orthogonal rotation, use the very nice method, two factors are independent. But here is a clear indication of interaction of x is with respect to the two factors. So what to put x6? How to solve this situation? Simply the answer is drop x6 and rerun the program. Drop x6 and rerun the program. Why? Because we are not in a position to fit x6 in a particular factor. We are able to find out the variables in factor 1, x1, x2, x8, x9. These four variables belongs to factor 1. x4, x5 belongs to factor 2. But what about factors x6? We are, the, we are not in a position to clearly say that x6 belongs to factor 1 or x6 belongs to factor 2. Why? Because the factor loading in absolute value sense, both the values are more than 0.5. In that state, what is the solution? Drop x6 and rerun the program. So, what we do here? We create another data frame, W2, dropping the x6 and do the same exercise. We create the data set, 
we get the correlation determinant value is positive kmo is 0.61 this is significant directly go to the loading Sorry, you are not doing this this year. 66 line number. You just see two types of output. One is the output that I discussed here. Only RC1 and RC2. And here you just see this is the H2, U2. What is the meaning of this H2 and U2? This U2 is basically the uniqueness. And what is H2? This is the cumulonimbus. If you go through the SPSS statistics or SPSS package, there is a single column of H2. What is the meaning of this H2? 0.699. The meaning is X1, the extraction of X1 is 0.699 with the factors. Similarly for X2, which one of the highest? X2 is the highest relation with the factors. Then x8 then x9 so just like that interpretation like the correlation with the vectors and one thing when we run this particular prop uh, command line number 61 if you follow this is this if you follow this line number 61 we just see we use code test bartlett g1 that is the correlation matrix object name and then 39 what is 39 it is the number of observations so you have to mention here number of observations so here the total number of observation is 39 that's why we are using this 39 clear so if we run this You see, these are the loadings. Um, what I'm going to see is three W two fine W two. Now we see for this, you just see clearly X one, X two, X eight, X nine belongs to factor one, and X four and X five are belongs to factor 2 so x1 x2 x8 and x9 constitute factor 1 x4 and x5 belongs to factor 2 clear these two factors now we want What we do here after calculating the factors basically we are using this type of equation
these are the equation and to try to find out this coefficient mathematically so in our model we already solved this so on the if we put the value e11 e12 e13 these are the coefficient value we know the value of x1 and x2 so for each observation for each observation there is a value of f1 and there is a value of f2 once we solve that is on the basis of this we know this these are the coefficients these are the coefficient 0 0.91 0 0.88 0 0.85 0 0.84 similarly for 0 0.89 0 0.95 see if we multiply 0 0.91 with the x1 value 0 0.88 with the x2 value see the data set The x. We see the data set. So this is your x1 value. So if you multiply this with the coefficient, this is your x2 value. So x2 into its coefficient. Similarly, all other variables for the observation one. Similarly, we can calculate this for observation two. If we calculate this, that is in the literature known as factor score. And how we calculate the factor score? What is the comment? Comment is this. This is the comment. First, we calculate the factor scores. Not this one. Yeah, this one. F is the name. First, we calculate the factor scores with respect to the data set and the PCF matrix. Then we find F and then we generate the f scores and view ff so line number 75 to 78 so once we generate this we define the first factor name as xx you define your name according as per the literature as per the domain so first we define this as xx then second one is yy and what we do here we are considering these variables x1 x2 x4 x5 x9 these are the variables in the set W2. We just see these are the variables x1, x2, x4, x5, x8, x9. We match these two variables with these variables. Clear? We see bind using the CBind function. If we match this, these are the variables. So these xx and xy are the factor codes. Clear up to this part? Up to this is clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Just a minute. Let me class AJ with Dosmid by the coach. Clear? So now we initially started our analysis with these variables. After dropping x3 and x7, we considering all these variables and then we drop x6 and then we make the factor analysis. So after doing this, x1, x2, x1, x2, x time, x8, x9, we define this as x x and this variable as y y then we rerun the regression analysis with these variables x x y y x3 x is x7 clear if we run this you see the summary one second correlation is good evalu is good now see these variables are significant. Xx is significant. In the earlier analysis, Xx is not a significant one. Xx is still significant one. Clear? Why is v, what is VIF?
but can I ask a question? So in that, you tried to remove the multi-core RVIT and then we run the aggregation. That's what we did, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You just see, why you guys still have multi-core RVIT, the model. And so we rerun this model like this. And run the multi core ID. Now it is okay. So these three are the expand variable. And correlation now in P0.76, P value is significant. All three values are all the coefficients are significantly expanding the dependent variable that is sense it. It is clear how to use the factor analysis. Or any doubt? Sir, I have one question. Please. In many papers, I have seen uh, some have used factor analysis and some have used PCA. So, what is the difference uh, when we can go for factor analysis? then when we can go for PCA? Always you go for PCA. The basic is PCA to find out the number of factors. The thing is, when you do the factor analysis to, for the extraction or to, to find out the number of the factors, there are basically two methods. One is principal component analysis and another is principal axis formatting. So today we are using the PCA. The another thing is principal axis formatting. You can use also principal access formatting depending upon the assumption and so on. That is another two hour class. When to use PA, principal access formatting PAF. So the paper you see where the only factor analysis is used, they are basically using the principal access formatting, not the principal comp uh, PCA, principal component analysis. Right? Okay, sir. I got clarified now. Perfect. Thanks. So coding's already given to you. In chat box. Data says all to also mail to you. Yes. Example two, let to give the another code for your practice purpose. One data set is given to you, 36 banks data, right? A 
I giving the code also so that you can practice. This code is only factor analysis. Code equation is there only for practicing factor analysis. This is a hypothetical data. So you just try to do it your own. If you face any problem doing this regarding interpretation, regarding any other issue, you just ask me to, um, in tomorrow class, but not before the class, after the end of the class. Because tomorrow we have a session of, on conjoint analysis. So after that, I will clear your doubts, if any, on factor analysis. <clears throat> so clear or any doubt? Please, say yes, something. Yes. Still now any doubt or it is clear right, right, right now? Please, all of you, please. Only two. So, remaining all of you have some problem or not? Sir, I have some question. When you in some uh, coding, they say piece PR com, and what is the difference between PRI and com? One is principal component. So, that is you have to find out the importance of principal component that is pins com. And what, when you do the PCA, that actually gives you the total factor loading score. So one is to find out the loading score. What is the value actually, coefficient value? And another is the importance of the factors. Joita is written OK. So what about the Borun, Momita? Hello, sir. Yeah, Asif. Sir, a question. Chilo, amar. Aapne jeta bol chile naar ki categorical je data ar ki. I mean, Likert scale je gulo niye ar ki primary data ro kor je sir. For that, for that, you have to learn the categorical factor analysis. Totally different. You cannot use the Pearson correlation. Here you use the Pearson correlation. In that case, you have to use the cyclochloric correlation. Entire literature is different. normal run Lots of papers are available with normal PCA, but mathematically that is not true. And if you Try to submit your paper in a good journal. There's a mm -hmm. Scopus index or ABCD. They are not accepting okay. your paper. You just see the paper, which paper that are not in Scopus or Web of Science. Okay, sir. You cannot find this in any good index journal. Got it, sir. So, can right? you uh, please suggest uh, some books? Hmm. For factor analysis or for factor analysis using R? If, so, you, learn, uh, if you are willing to learn the theory, then yes, uh, one of the book is Johnson Ritchie. Uh, and another book I currently... Just a minute. Just a minute, I'm uh, kind of, uh, what's the name of the book? Focus. One is Johnson Richard, another book is a very good book. I don't want to that book.
uh, another book is the name of the book is multimedia statistical methods a premier it is uh, written by manly and alberto the book film is from crc press new york so, so, can, so can you repeat once please multivariate multimedia statistical the methods a premier yeah please write in the chat box Must go through this book. This book is very good book for factor analysis, discriminant analysis, logit analysis, multinomial logit. Everything is very good. The theoretical part is very good. Manley and Alberto. Any other query? Okay, sir. Thank you. So now factor analysis is clear to all of you or not? Please unmute and say. Still have any doubt? Or it is okay? Can I stop here? Yes, sir. Only one sound, yes, sir. So all of you? What about Asit, Borun, Momita? Should yes, sir, it's clear. And we will practice by ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Keep any doubt? Yeah, without... Tomorrow we will meet for a conjoint analysis, okay. and after that I will clear. Okay, that's good. So, what about Navanita? It is clear to you? So can I stop now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you.